Domestic violence doesn't stop when someone goes from work to home. It spans those two universes, and it's a constant and linked cycle of control, abuse, and distraction. It crosses socioeconomic boundaries, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and geography. Its toll on the victim can create productivity loss at work, disruption for the workday, increased risk in the workplace for colleagues, and tragically can mean physical harm and death. Ron and his amazing wife, Jan, are the co-founders of the Jamie Kimball Foundation for Courage. When Ron and Jan's daughter, Jamie, was killed by her ex-boyfriend, Labor Day of 2012, their lives changed for forever. Ron and I were sitting next to each other. He introduced himself and Debbie, you know, Deputy <clears throat> City Manager of Charlotte, and I thought, wow, th this is kind of an important place to be. Should I be here? But then when I asked him about being here, he, he shared with me that he'd lost his daughter, Jamie, two months earlier. Long involved in civic activities, they have rededicated themselves to using Jamie's story to prevent intimate partner violence and to encourage healthy relationships in the lives of everyone, especially youth and young adults. In early 2013, they founded the Jamie Kimball Foundation for Courage to support initiatives which defined outcomes in the areas of prevention, education, awareness, and research for the exploration of innovative methods to stop intimate partner violence. When you look at our workforce, we're 50% women. You can't shy away from this because it's a difficult topic. It impacts so many of our employees. And again, it may be them directly. It may be a manager watching someone go through it. But the number one thing we've done is not actually that complicated. It's about just opening up the dialogue. So I think don't be overwhelmed by the task at hand. I think start small. And I would say start with awareness, just getting the dialogue going. When you start telling some stories and people understand that if, if they don't think that somebody in their life that they know this topic isn't touching, they're, they're just not being honest with themselves. It's made people proud and of the work that we've done. Because again, like I said, there's not, not that much we do where we literally help save lives. But during this transition phase of my life while I was going through this process, I said, you know, it's really not the time for me to think about what others are gonna think of me because I wanna take back my power and I really wanna get out of this and I don't wanna go back. So I think I need to let my employer know what's going on. I scheduled an appointment with my manager and I remember going <coughs> to her office and explaining to her what I was going through. And her response was so supportive. She said, whatever it is that we need to do to support you during this time, we are here for you. If you need to change your schedule, if you need to come in late, whatever it is that you need to do, we are here for you. Yeah, it what, definitely, definitely helps when you have a CEO mm -hmm. and a board that's supportive. But, you know, again, I think I wouldn't let that discourage people either. You know, it just, it really takes a few people to kind of get the ball rolling. Right. It can start in many different ways, whether it starts from yeah. bottoms up, whether it starts with human resources, whether it starts from the CEO, yeah. uh, and an opportunity to grow it yeah. uh, that's tailored to your own organization. But at one point, uh, Amy has decided she's going to move away, and she's with her mother and father and her young son. And she drives up to her home, she goes into her home, thinking that her husband is not there. When she went into the house, her husband met her and, and shot her in the head and killed her. And so when, when that happened to us, talking about raising awareness and then commitment, Verizon was committed to say, we have to do something about this. And so we knew we had to create an environment, uh, as, as Sherry said just this morning, where you could talk about this, where you could just talk about it and not hide it away. We started with what we can't do. What we can't do, no, we can't do that. No, we can't make our employees do that. No, we can't make them tell us about a protective order. I wanted to start with a different question. What can we do? What can we do? And there are lots of small things that are meaningful that we can, changing your employee's phone number. Something simple like that. 
Over the, the coming weeks, we decided to kind of get out and syndicate the Bank of America Domestic Violence Task Force team of two. Already many Bank of America employees who, who, who are champions in the cause of domestic violence, dedicating their lives in their communities to this. When we pulled the, 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 the task force together, it really wasn't a new task force. We just found each other. We found everybody out in the pockets and we pulled each other together. We created a, a charter. Um, we created a strategic framework. The support model we have in place, you guys have heard a little bit about, but it's under the HR um, department at Bank of America. It's called Life Event Services. We have several teams, um, and our Life Event Services executive, Kate, is here today as well. So our team is not uh, counselors. You know, We're not um, the experts on all the topics, but what we do is understand the benefits that we have to offer, whether that be Bank of America benefits or community benefits. One of the themes that, that, we came, that came up in, all, in those virtual town halls uh, was that you have to have an action plan. You have to find a way to get out. And we know that it's not as simple as just leaving. You have to have support services. You have to f find places to stay. You have to have a relationship with your employer where you can, you can have the difficult conversations, how to be flexible, how to be pliable, how to work with the person, and not just a job description. And just knowing I had that support from my employer, because this is my livelihood, obviously, I didn't want to lose my job, I believe that gave me that extra courage that I needed to continue to move forward and get out of that relationship safely. Employers play such a role, you know, in helping women and men transition out of that situation. And so I'm very thankful that, you know, I had an employer. It was Tom Warner at the time that helped me. So thank you, Jamie Kimball. Um, thank you to the Kimball Foundation and For Safe Alliance for having me here today.